Welcome to our program to honor the men and women that protected us today and yesterday. September 14, 1814, Francis Scott Kay saw the American flag waving in the breeze after the defeat of Fort McHenry. The sight of our flag standing tall in the aftermath of war inspired him to write a poem titled Defense of Fort McHenry. Later, this poem was set to music and called the Star Spangled Banner. In the Central Congress for Korean, the Star Spangled Banner is our national anthem. Now our pre-kindergarten and kindergarten children will now perform your grand old flag. You're a grand old flag, you're a high flag and flag, and forever in peace may you reign. You're the emblem of the land of love, the home of the free and the brave. Every heart beats true under red, light and blue, when there's never a boast or brag. But should all acquaintance be forgot, keep your eye on To help our school children honor America and the flag, Francis Bellamy wrote the Pledge of Allegiance in 1982. Some words have been added since the original pledge was written. In 1954, President Eisenhower encouraged Congress to add the words under God, creating the 31 World Pledge we said today. Our first grade students will now perform Yankee Doodle. America the Beautiful is written by Catherine Lee Bates in 1893. After visiting Pikes Peaks in Colorado, Catherine Lee Bates wrote a poem describing how beautiful the scenes was she saw. The second grader will now perform this land as your land.
Veterans Day is a very important holiday in our country for it honors all men and women living and dead who bravely served our country in one of the United States Armed Forces. In 1918, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, the world rejoiced and celebrated. After four years of bitter war, the Allied powers signed a ceasefire called the Armistice. This action brought World War I to an end. November the 11th, 1919 was set aside as the Armistice Day in the United States to remember the sacrifices that our armed forces made during the time of World War I. Armistice Day officially received its name in the United States in 1926. Twelve years later, Armistice Day became a national holiday. The townspeople in Emporia, Kansas called the Holiday of Veterans Day in 1953. They did this for all the veterans in their town so they could be honored for their service and sacrifice. In 1954, the United States designated November 11th as Veterans Day to honor all the soldiers who served our country. Every year on November 11th, we honor the brave men and women who make this land of the free and home of the brave. We can never fully repay our debt of gratitude to over 650,000 American members who died in battle. We can't repay over 1.4 million service members who have been wounded in the line of duty. We can, however, on, honor and thank more than 25 million veterans still living today. Today, it is our privilege to say thank you to all of our America's veterans. To let them know that we appreciate them, service and honor their families and sacrifices. We are proud of our veterans. The price of freedom is high. We cannot afford to forget those who are willing to pay for it. Former President George H.W. Bush once said, memory is the first measure of gratitude. Those who are truly grateful do not forget the service that has been rendered for their sake. John F. Kennedy said, we are thankful and must never forget not to utter words, but live by them. We need to make ourselves worthy of our veterans' courage and sacrifice. We need to live by which our nation veterans have so nobly served. The spirit of courage, the spirit of honor, and the spirit of America the 3rd, 4th, and 5th grade will now perform the Armed Service Medley to honor our men and women of our five branches of the military, the Coast Guard, the Air Force, the Navy, the Marine Corps, and the Army.